I'm a member of the Africa Progress Panel, which, as you know, was started by Kofi Annan and really, I think, has been a very constructive force in, in trying to increase awareness around the world of the opportunities in Africa and to help work with the African countries on the one hand and the industrial countries on the other to constructively work together on the issues and challenges that Africa poses. And so let me uh, add my welcome to those that you've already heard, to all of you here today. When I was Secretary of the Treasury, I traveled to Sub-Saharan Africa, and I, I formed a view while I was there that has remained consistent through all of the experiences I've had that have been Africa-related since then. And that view which was that on the one hand, Africa obviously faces enormous challenges, and, and all of you know those challenges, but that it also presents tremendous opportunities. As Arnold just said, the problems of Africa have, have long dominated its image, and in my view at least, have clouded the views of investors, with the result that Africa has had less, far less focus than is warranted. That's starting to change, though. More recently, there's been increasing recognition in the investor world of the opportunities in Africa, and there's been more focus on Africa as an arena for serious investment activity. The consulting firm McKinsey & Company, in a report entitled Fulfilling the Promise of Sub-Saharan Africa, said, and I quote, the region has already made big strides below the radar. It now stands to become the developing world's next great success story, unquote. Along similar lines, the Boston Consulting Group, another distinguished international management consulting firm, said, and again I quote, in a report that was titled The African Challengers, quote, hidden in plain view, scores of African companies have been competing and rapidly expanding in the global economy, unquote. The report went on to say that the convention, quote, the conventional view is that Africa has been down so long that it will be hard for it ever to rebound. This view is understandable, but out of date. And I, I agree with that, that sentiment. It seems to me that the discussion of, of African indices themselves at the New York Stock Exchange is a sign of how Africa is coming of age as a focal point for global investors. I remember when I was in Mozambique and the finance minister at the time said to me that there could be an enormous increase in agricultural development and agricultural income in the interior of the country if there was adequate, if there were adequate roads and adequate trucks to bring those products to market on the coast. And my reaction at that time, I was at Treasury, Secretary of Treasury, my reaction was that on the one hand, that was a problem for the country, but on the other hand, it was an enormous opportunity for providers of capital to get highly attractive risk-adjusted rates of return that probably weren't available in comparable projects anyplace else in the world. The Africa investor expressed this point very well and more broadly in their report. And they said, and let me quote once again, this is the opportunity in Africa, a pivotal market with much greater potential than actual output today. A market like this needs just a bit of capital, a bit of private investment to get the ball rolling, end of quote. And that was the point I think that Arnold made a moment ago, and it was the point that the finance minister of Mozambique made to me quite some number of years ago, which is that small amounts of capital can generate tremendous amounts of economic activity in Africa, and also, in doing so, can be enormously profitable to investors. I remember when President Clinton got back from his own trip to Sub-Saharan Africa, and what he said was that most people look at Africa as a unit, but that that's wrong. And that what 
and that Africa needs to be seen instead country by country and needs to be understood country by country. Clearly, there are some countries with tragic conditions. And those countries need to be focused on with a great intensity by the global community. But those countries also dominate the news. And as President Clinton said also, when he returned, and we, I remember we were all sitting around the Oval Office talking about his trip to Sub-Saharan Africa. And what he said then is even more true today, that while those tragic conditions tend to dominate the news, maybe particularly in the United States, there are many countries where real progress is being made and where conditions are conducive to business and to investment. Let me make two more points, if I may, about investment in Africa today. First one is one that the Boston Consulting Group made in a report. Well, it's a report I referred to earlier. And they listed 40 companies that were making a real mark. And what the report said was that those companies and many others are involved not only in the extractive industries, and clearly the natural resource industries are an important part of the African economy and will be for a long time to come. But the point that the Boston Consulting Group made, and I think it was a point again that, that Arnold made, was that many of these companies are involved in other areas, financial services, media, transport, logistics, industrial goods, and so many other areas. And the point was that while natural resources, I said a moment ago, will remain important in Africa for a long time to come, there are many, many other opportunities in many other areas for economic development and for successful investment. And secondly, it seems to me that in the long run, profitability is likely to be associated with good citizenship. Examples are extractive companies that benefit over the long run by addressing the environmental conditions and the environmental issues that can be associated with extractive act activity. Another example would be the companies that provide training and health care and, and other services to their workers. And the reason I say this is in the interest not only of the people of Africa, but also of the companies themselves, is that when business helps provide better conditions for the people of Africa, they also help generate public and political support for a positive business environment, for the rule of law, for good governance, for strong but sensible regulation, and for the other requisites for business success. Let me close by saying that it has long seemed to me that what Africa needed was to find ways of bringing its story more effectively to the global investment community. And that may be particularly true again in the United States where the historic ties are of a different nature than they were in Europe. And that is exactly the purpose of this summit today. Over the past decade, there have been huge new pools of capital developed with hedge funds, with private equity funds. Traditional pools, such as pension funds, have increased enormously, and investment has become truly global. In this context, most investment arenas around the globe have been thoroughly explored. But Africa, it seems to me, is a particularly intriguing opportunity because while intention has increased, it is still the receipt, it is still the recipient of far less focus than comparable areas elsewhere. And that, it seems to me, provides an arena of opportunity that is worth the focus and the attention of all of us. However, <laughs> to succeed in that effort, it seems to me that one needs to follow the advice of President Clinton and not to view Africa as a whole, but rather to understand Africa country by country and opportunity by opportunity. This summit is bringing together American investors, including pension funds and many other bodies of capital, with heads of African stock exchanges, African CEOs, and African public officials. And that it provides American investors on the one hand, and our guests from Africa on the other hand, 
the opportunity to establish business relationships that can then be the basis for activity in the, in the months and years ahead. And it also gives investors the opportunity to better understand the many countries of Africa. And it gives our African guests the opportunity to better understand the interests and the concerns of investors. With that, let me welcome you once again to this conference. And I wish you the best, both in the time you are here and also in your respective involvements in the economic life of Africa in the months, years, and decades to come. Thank you very much. Doing business in Africa. You can't afford to be without Africa Investor.